I think it's also um, another D E S U E T U D E. Oh no! Yeah, desuetude. Des D E S U E T U D E. Desuetude. I don't know that word. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let me open up Google. Uh... Is it just being poor in French? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's poor, but with flavor. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. doing like a cold open <laughs> <laughs> i guess not anymore uh, <laughs> well um hey guys welcome back to another episode of unfiltered pineapple podcast yeah. my name is Ari, and i'm joined today by dean and platypus what's say up? hi guys what's up what's up so what's my up? idea today is um since i'm in law school I'm gonna put you guys through hypotheticals. Do it. Um, so we'll we'll do like um, a couple hypotheticals and see if you guys can spot any legal issues. So um, for the audience, like you, um, whenever you're, if you're in law school, you know that you learn legal concepts, you learn rules, and then you learn to apply those rules to like a hypothetical. So mm-hmm. um, the main objective is to read a prompt. You know. And then being able to spot the legal issues. And that's like the point of like a law school exam is to, you know, spot those legal issues. Yeah. So um, with that said, um, I am going to give you two, which you're not, you know, at all like trained in, in the law. So um, it'll be interesting to see if you guys can spot anything. As a perfect so law-abiding hypo- citizen, I'm not worried. <laughs> All right, so here's the first um, hypothetical. Mm-hmm. As, a, as a joke, Annette removes the bullets from her father's revolver. She takes the gun outside and points it to the head of her neighbor, Miss Joyner, who is just leaving her house. Miss Joyner, who, unknown to Annette, suffers from serious heart disease has a stroke, and dies instantly. All right, so I guess, like, you know, is there something wrong there? <laughs> well, is is it... she actually culpable for that? That's what yeah. he's asking. What's yeah, What is she the... culpable for if she is? I mean... We just did the crime tier list. We can figure this out. <laughs> yeah, I played Ace <laughs> Attorney a lot. Yeah. So... The bottom what is line it? is that she wouldn't have died if, if she is. Had yeah, is she responsible her... for that? Yeah, because yes. nobody forced her to go and take a real revolver and like play a joke with the like that shit's not funny. And she do a no fake western no shootout. Yeah. Her. Yeah. All right. Um. So that would be an example of a tort. A tort. A tort is. A tort is a wrong that you commit against another person. A T O R T. Yeah, it's also happened to spelled the same as like an actual dessert. The torts. That's a, a tar- oh, I thought you meant the tart. A tart is T A R T. No, it's T O R T. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, that's an example of a tort. A tort is a wrong that you commit against another person. Mm-hmm. Um, one common example is like if you get into a car accident, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, you have like liability to another person depending on whether or not you're responsible. Um, so yeah, that would be, I mean, is an obvious example of a tort, but, um, there's also different categories of it. There's assault, there's battery, well, there's not battery, uh, there is negligence. Yeah, it'd be negligence, there's nuisance. There's no. intentional infliction of emotional distress. It wouldn't be negligence. I mean, she had no false idea. In, yeah. And false imprisonment. So, I mean, 
I will give you like the the hypotheticals, and then like I'll also explain to you what it could actually be. By the way, but so that so what you your... said that could be negligence. It could it could be um of any of those things that I list. So oh, so those battery. are all those are all correct, or those are all no 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 no. Those are just examples of torts. But oh the, okay okay the, okay. You're supposed to find out which one, which type of tort it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's not negligence. Because negligence implies that you have some sort of understanding of that that's going to happen, or a, a dereliction of duty, I believe, something like that. Wow, that's actually right on on par. Like, so it's like not you're ne- right. Yes. Yeah, so it's not negligence. Again, as a law-abiding well, citizen, <laughs> so it's negligence in terms of being a gun owner or something like that, but not in terms of um, knowing about the other person's condition. Um, okay, so you ruled out that. Yes. What is what is your inclination? Repeat what the options are. Assault, no. battery, no. False imprisonment, nuisance, intention, intentional infliction of emotional stress, and strict liability. Uh, well, could intentional stress. Yeah, I'm thinking intentional. Nuisance? That's what I'm leaning towards. I mean, it would be one of those two for me, but I'm more leaning towards the intentional infliction of emotional stress. Yeah, because... Well, it's kind of what a prank is. Pulling, yeah, pulling a prank is causing someone to have a shift in motion, an emotional so, reaction or something like that, so... So, Platypus, that's your final answer? Yeah. And, Dean, is that your final answer? Or did you want to go with what another? Was the one, what was the one after that? The option after that? Um... Strict liability. Strict liability. I'll go with the emotional distress for now. That's actually a good guess, but yeah. remember, the fact pattern is that she dies instantly from it. So there's no there's no claim if she's actually not alive. Mm. It's just the correct assume. answer the correct answer would actually be assault. Really? Because threatened. Because um, because Annette basically um, uh, assault is actually just the uh, what is it like the uh, the threat when you make someone think yeah a yeah threat. the battery is the actual what you would think is assault battery is the actual like physical contact or um action taken right so that's that would be the straightforward answer there Mm. might actually be another like um argument for battery as well um with battery there has to be a touching yeah like you have to touch the other person so there is a question of fact as to whether you know annette was touching her with the gun but there's spheres of influence in the theory of law so um there, it could actually be a touching, even though she doesn't get physically touched. Hmm. So, okay. So, um, yeah. And then, like, if that was an exam question, you know, obviously the the straightforward one is like assault. Yeah. Um, but the next runner up, you know, and also making arguments for is battery. Um, there might be an argument for negligence, but it's going to be really hard to yeah. prove what duty. Annette has to her neighbor Mm -hmm. and so that would also be like a question of fact and you know if you're a good lawyer you would make the argument that it's also negligent Mm -hmm. whether as a neighbor or as a gun owner or both yeah but would her dad get slapped with negligence here or does it not really matter it depends on the state well, the thing is, it's like she doesn't, she doesn't, Annette doesn't know that her neighbor had serious heart disease. Yeah, and but so, is she supposed to have easy like, access she, to the gun or something if she's not the owner of it? That's the question uh, Platypus yeah. is asking. So, and it, if, and also another thing about negligence, you know, if you, for example, break a law, mm-hmm. um, that can become negligence per se because it's like you know. Oh, it's obviously negligence because she had a duty as a gun owner not to point the gun at her neighbor. And so she's breaking a law and that's, you know, breaking a duty. She breached the duty of um, care, you know, towards her neighbor for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So 
That's so just the, one. <laughs> the emotional distress one was not any of the correct options. No, because um, obviously, like, the neighbor died, and so there's no real claim to it. Emotional distress. Um, I mean, she had, like, a brief moment. Yeah, isn't the thinking that she was so distressed she had a heart attack? Yeah, that's and... what caused the surge in her chemical balance to just hit the heart. Um, that was an emotional that is a good argument too. That is that was the emotional I'll, I'll say, reaction, yeah. Yeah, and um, so her survivors, like her family members, that you know, obviously bring the suit against mm-hmm. Annette, then would be able to say like, well. You know, that caused her, you know, intentional distress. And so yeah. um, inten- I'll, I'll say one thing about intentional infliction of emotional distress is one of those torts where it's an add on. It's not necessarily some, something not that, the focus. you know, someone goes. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, you know, like an add on to that. OK. OK. That's just as extra like evidence or like, oh, well will help control the narrative a little better by framing it with this also. And it really depends on the state too, because um, they could add that on to get more damages. So more money. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Well, Platypus, well, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Platypus, blah, wow. Platty daddy. There we go. I can say that. What are your, th- <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Oh, um, I mean, it makes sense when you spell it all out. It just, I don't know, surface level for, I guess people green like us, almost anything could seem like it applies, but you know, you gotta take and I'll a deep say, dive. Yeah. And I'll say that, you know, as lay lay people, um, you guys have real good instincts because, you know, you have some idea of what the law is and, you know, you're able to you know, just go off instinct. And um, when I was taking torts my first year... Um, Wait, is that the class or the subject title, torts? Yeah, that's oh, the okay. actual subject that's matter. Not yep. just like, okay, interesting. Um, so, yeah, there was like a whole like semester of that class for me. Yeah. And, you know, we focus on different areas. You mm-hmm. know, first part of semester was assault and then battery and then, you know, negligence. Negligence was the biggest one because that's obviously the biggest area of the law you yeah, know because you, um, pr- you have to prove like i'm not gonna say jurisdiction but you have to prove like what part of the i guess domain yeah. or territory someone's responsible for let's say in a certain like it's like concept. you know yeah. it's the concept of responsibility like yeah if de- I... defining the responsible boundaries that's 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 what i meant yeah yeah um like like i invite you to my house and then you trip because like I don't know, uh, my floors are uneven, you know, that would be a case of negligence, you know, where you can come against me and say, like, you have a duty of care. You invited me into your house and that and you kept, you know, your premises like unsafe. And so I getting sued by Santa (laughs) and you, yeah, you get sued by Santa. That'd be (laughs) fireplace is unclean. Got a bunch of splinters in them. Uh, tripped on your rug, tripped yeah. over the dog, didn't lock your dog up in the cage. The dog bites, yeah. bites Santa. Yeah, come on, Oof. you know he's coming. Oh my gosh. Um, a uh, little fun fact too. Some states have a one bite law. So mm-hmm. if your dog bites someone, uh, you know, one time, yep, it's fine. But if it's more than once, that's when you can get sued. What if it's they the, allow, what if it's they the allow, same encounter they and they dog. bite twice? Then you're liable. Okay. You, yeah. It's not like they didn't have a good grip the first time, so they go for uh, they go for it again. It's not two separate occasions. Yeah. Okay. You're given you're given one bite. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you guys get the idea, um, and I guess like I can go on to the next prompt. Um, you guys think you like this? Is it interesting enough? So you guys like that? Actually, you know what? Um, we could probably yeah, do bad. something else. Yeah. Okay. What do you th- um, What are you thinking? 
tort, more tarts, what? more tarts, torts. <laughs> more tarts. <laughs> it's not a stroke. Um, here's an idea. Like, why don't I pull up a list of legal terms and you guys have to guess basically what it means? Yeah, sure. I'm good with murder. I mean, negligence. All right. <laughs> murder. You want to do murder? No. I don't know what murder is. I would never. <laughs> All right. Um, do you guys know what an arraignment arraignment is? It's not when you're summoned somewhere or gather somewhere. That's actually a pretty good guess. Um, yeah, that's a better guess than what I was going to say. I was just going to say like a meeting. Um, like... It's basically a court proceeding. So okay. So that's when the criminal defendant is brought into court. They're told what the charges are, um, and then sometimes they're asked if they plead guilty or not guilty. Oh, this is pre-trial and pre like potential jury selection or case dis or um, uh, yeah, case date when they actually are going to court for it. This is like, hey, maybe is it also like the bond day sometimes, where they yeah. where they tell you what your bond is. It um well I think that's a separate um proceeding. Okay. Usually usually they tell you what the charges are. Yeah. And then what you're like then you can ask for a court appointed attorney or uh -huh. they'll tell you like oh you can't afford one you know they'll, they'll give one for, one for you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So yeah, yeah platypus got that. Yeah. But more than that. Right. Yeah. Um, here is a legal term that's only that's really specific to Virginia. All right. I I think you guys will have no idea what it means. Um, it it, th it comes from French, I believe. Ooh, not my specialty. <laughs> I know. And there 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 was like no context clues either. Just based. I was on just the about word. to say, put it in a sentence if we need it. <laughs> it's like like a spelling bee. Can you give me the origin here? You already gave the origin. You're already saying there's no sentence for it. Um, well, there is a sentence for it. You know, okay. I can come up with. Well, one. give it. Yeah, give it. I'll stop talking. <laughs> All right. So the word is demur. Demur, it's like D E M U R. D E M U R, R E R. Demur. R E R. Demur. Uh -huh. Okay. Demur. That's yeah. Possible. It's it's very it's a very common legal term. In Virginia, it's not really used anymore anywhere else. Is it um, used more on papers than in um than in the actual courtroom uh, courthouse where uh, when talking to the jury or the judge? It's used. It's more written than the, oral. It's is spoken and it's also written. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a sentence Do on it. demur. It was held that the plaintiff's claim succeeded. Is that review? So, like appeal, second review? That's a good guess. Platypus? And I'll also say... Uh, go ahead. Oh, I, I said platypus. Do you have a guess before? Or do you want another oh, hint? No. no, I was just thinking it's like, a, it's like a date or something that's always set for these proceedings. but yeah, Kind of like sure. arraignment, but like afterwards? Yeah, something like that. Okay. So Virginia still keeps this term. Um, it's an objection. On so, objection. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Virginia uses it for like, uh, let's say like there's a case against you. You place a demur. Um, it is. Other localities say like it's a motion to dismiss. Okay based on their failure to prove it mm -hmm. um so it's like an objection you know to the opponent that you know their point is yeah. irrelevant or yeah. is not right okay so the judge then you know says like can decide whether or not that's the point you know yeah um so it's just to or, save writing or <laughs> it's to save it's, time it's a fancy it's a fancy way also of saying an objection well, it does have a distinction from objection because they are two different words. So, yeah, and 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 like, um, it is a specific motion to dismiss. You know, specifically a motion to dis di to dismiss. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, <laughs> that's uh, honestly like when I first heard that word, I had no idea what it meant. 
Mm-hmm. And then I, it kept showing up and it kept showing up. And I'm just like, I need to learn how what this word means. <laughs> I need to actually Google <laughs> this word. <laughs> I need to actually know what it means. And then I was like, wait, is it really just that? It's like, oh, ha ha, demur. All right. <laughs> why, why you got to imitate a French person to say it? Um, I think it comes from French. Demure. Yeah, but demure. it's not, oh, uh-huh, demur. It's demur. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like you're about to break open a fresh baguette. Or well, maybe it is. He's the he's the lost. Student. Yeah, you're right. He's the one that's seen it in writing. It's like you see a ha ha, H A space H A space demur. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. So I mean, some of these words are kind of straightforward. Like you know, I. Conviction, for example, you got you guys know what that means. Yeah, yeah. What I, is I would it? I would hope. Yeah, it means to um, I want to put it into legal definition. Put it into a definition. Um, is a a judgment well, of guilt to convict? Yeah. Okay. So it it was determined by whoever that the party is guilty or um, <laughs> it's accurate. Whatever the charges are. Well, you tried to. You're trying to incorporate some legal, yeah, and not use the terms. word convict. Yeah, they're trying to. They say whatever the charges were are true. It was deemed uh, <laughs> accurate. Yeah, good job. What is collateral? Collateral. Collateral. It's a French word. Actually, it's not a French word. Nah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, that means unintended. Um. Not charges, unintended uh, side effects or damages that um, came about, whatever the charges are. So, if, you know, someone wrecked someone else's car and uh, destroyed their landscaping and stuff, some collateral would be, uh, I don't know, uh, not the damages, Something but the time damaged, wasted. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the time wasted to have to get someone repaving stuff and extra cost for that or. Uh, they couldn't back out of the driveway thing. because of that, so they couldn't go to work. Yeah, Dean, that's spot on, but but that wasn't the actual definition I was looking for. Okay, you well, are correct. Okay, like collateral has different legal meanings depending on what you're actually looking at. Yeah, but in this case, I was just looking at like property that's promised as like a security. Oh, for, so as like, a, a re- for the repayment. Yeah. Like, for like a repayment, yeah. So the actual tangible so, property itself, or something. Well, I put it doesn't up, have I put up my physical. car yeah. for collateral and buying like something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you're you're also correct in in that alternate definition too. Yeah, like Good oh, job. they couldn't back out of the driveway at all because it was obstructed or torn open, so they couldn't go to work for a few days. Yeah. So time wasted, there, time lost there. So I haven't been there. I wouldn't know. All right, here's another term for you, and I think you'd be surprised because if you hear this word, you're going to think about, like, science and and stuff, but right. it, not, it, not has, my specialty. it has no reference at all to science, unfortunately. Earth. <laughs> the, the word is discovery. Oh, Platypus, you go first. Discovery? Yeah, like, that's yeah, the, like the channel. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they all sit in the judge's office judge's uh room for an hour and just watch the discovery channel i wish <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fun yeah was like top, 10 learn, animal, or... top 10 animal facts best of when you learn or become aware of something i guess legally significant in this case like I don't know the discovery of a corpse or piece of evidence <laughs> or something. That's I've got, I've that's got a, a guess. good guess. I've got a guess. Yeah, it's uh, it's sharing evidence between both parties that will that has been approved and will be used in the courtroom mm-hmm. to uh, formulate formulate their narrative or their case. Um, it's it's sharing evidence with the other party that they may not have or did not know that you possessed, um, so that everyone's aware of what options are available for the case uh, whether to use for defense or offense it's not the best that, technical term but or maybe yeah. that's the whole process of discovery not the actual definition but i mean you're actually spot on for each and every sentence you just said <laughs> yeah <laughs> like um discovery is like the procedures you know to yeah. 
get evidence. Um, so perceived to get evidence. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, so, like for example, whenever there's like a lawsuit, um, let's say I'm suing you for like a car accident, right? Um, and I'm like the attorney for like one party. Um, so I want to get mm, like evidence, like um, that the other person might have, and so I would issue like a subpoena, mm-hmm. and I would ask for whatever I'm looking for. So, um, let's say like I want to find out if this person was on the cell phone talking. And that was the cause of the accident. So because it is like relevant, legally relevant, you know, I could be like, hey, I would like to get um, cell phone records and then I can subpoena the other side and they would have to share it because they're legally bound because it is something that has weight in the case. And so, yeah, and that's the process of discovery. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I I have not watched Law and Order much, but I think that does enough for me. Hmm. What does due process mean? Something a little bit more like where we learned in like high school and stuff. You guys hear it all the time, due process. But what does it actually mean? Due process. Uh, it means... It's in the Constitution. Yeah, you ha- it's, it's, mentioned... it's an innate right that we are given from the Constitution to... Well, that's just repeating the amendment. What is actually due process? A fair tr- procedure um, without bias. It's You uh, don't have any... Um, it's... If any third party came and reviewed it, the case in the trial should be seen as like untampered on, you know, it's, it's straightforward. I don't know if I'm repeating the amendment or due process itself. Um, uh, cause I'm not giving a good definition. Well, due process. I don't know. Platypus? You're, you're, you're getting yeah, close to it. it. I'm like, what do you, what do you think Platy? I'm like, totally I don't have it. anything that specific, just like, like a standard code of conduct or like process that everyone's entitled to. But I mean, yeah, you're I'm both thinking. you're both kind of hitting it. We're like tiptoeing um, around it, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what is what is due process itself actually. What does that mean? So it's mentioned twice in the Constitution. It's mentioned in the Fifth Amendment, and it's no, I'm sorry, the Sixth Amendment, and it's also mentioned in the Fourteenth yeah. Amendment. Yeah. Okay. Um. So due process is it's a guarantee. It's like the it's a guarantee that the government will give you fairness in like a trial you know some of the three things that you know the government can't really take away from you is life liberty and property without like justification and so due process is that you know procedures of you know like the government having to take in order to be able to take your life your property and you know other stuff um so um it's just a guarantee that you know, the government has to take steps, um, fair, fair steps, you know, before it can, you know, do anything like, you know, push you away for jail. Mm -hmm. So one example is like, um, let's say you owe money on, on your property taxes, you know, um, due process requires the government to notify you. So it's like, they can't just like, take your property they actually have to send you notice and it's also required that you have um that they can prove that you know you got the notice it they they also have to give you like um an opportunity to you know um respond or react respond to to react to it you know it's like it's not like oh in 12 hours you have to be on the other side of the state with (laughs) all this stuff in hand yeah and so and then afterwards it's like you know after that period of time then they can go to court Mm -hmm. and then after that they can you know get an order have time to get have time to get your own lawyer yeah all of that those are that's a due process okay it's like respect for the 
it's criminal charge. They have equal rights to be, even though prosecution has the advantage. They have the charges. The person might be in jail, or you know, being uh, searched. The uh, the victim in the case, or the ac- accusee. No. Whatever the defendant, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> they have a, they're the they're they should be treated with respect in the process. Still, they still have rights. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use that one now. Accusee. Um. Yeah. Ac- <laughs> the accusee is because the prosecution's yeah, like the accuser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're not wrong. Um. So yeah, it's more of a concept. You know, it's kind of hard yeah, to define. Definitely. Um. I well, never actually uh, thought yeah. of giving it a definition. Just how it was used is how it's, is how I have always thought of due process. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. And here's a term that you guys probably hear but don't really know what it really means. Subpoena. Hearsay. Hearsay. All right. Hearsay. Us. What do you think hearsay? What is, is hearsay? It's something that can't be verified. It's just like someone coming in and talking about chatter, but it can't really be legally verified. So high school gossip. Tracy went and got pregnant, but nobody knows this. What do you think, uh, Dean? Um, I think it's like high school gossip, but on a professional level. Someone says something, and you can't verify if it's true or not. Kind of like what Platypus said. Um. Hearsay. It's usually not hearsay, but <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's just claims, I guess, that are made um, without evidence. Or there may be mm-hmm. evidence, but it's not strong enough to actually uh, uh, 100% support it. It's like, eh, it's implied or something like that, situational, but... Mm-hmm. Like he you, said, she said. Yeah. And then on if I, and then on uh, the f- fourth person down the line, they also said this. Um, that's, that's both both of those are really good answers. But um, hearsay is very specific. Yeah. Um, this is a very specific legal term. But you guys both hit the point. You know, hearsay is evidence presented by like a witness who did not see or hear about whatever is being asked. Oh, them. they weren't they weren't actually involved in it. They just it's like, oh, uh let's say someone killed someone and then called their mother and said I killed someone. The, what the mother says mm-hmm. would be hearsay about what they heard on the phone call, but not actual evidence that it happened or that they did it or that they watched a murder happen or something. Right? One of the like the common one of the common examples of hearsay is like when you're up on you know, the stand giving mm-hmm. testimony. And let's say, like, um, I wanted to say something that you had said to me. You okay. know, it's like, I can say whatever, you know, that is that I observe, you know. So, like, if you're telling me, like, oh, I I killed someone this morning. It's yeah. like, okay, you told me personally. So, yeah, that's acceptable evidence, you know. But if you were to be like, um, Sally killed uh, someone this how- morning platypus killed someone this morning to me i can't say that in court oh because it's not direct from the victim or the accuser or the accuser yes it's it's someone else okay so yeah you have that phone call with your mother and then your mother tells your sister yeah i just got off the phone with dean yeah (laughs) so it's because like you know the game of telephone it's it's a game of telephone yeah yeah okay whenever you're asking someone of a witness like you know what they're what they saw you know is something that like the court doesn't like to hear outside evidence yeah um and so hearsay is not really admissible they want to hear as close to the source as possible so if you have 15 people down the line of like i said the game of telephone then they don't care about that yeah yeah and the funny thing is like in the rules of evidence there's about 32 exceptions to the hearsay you know rule 30 so, is that general like across the nation or just for virginia 32 the, the exceptions the federal the the federal, the federal rules okay. of, the federal rules of evidence um has 32 exceptions that to seems like it, that seems like it allows a lot of exceptions so like i mean 
to give you an example, like one exception is like if there's a lab report, you know. Yeah. Um. Okay. So like, let's say I did a DNA test on someone. I'm like the lab technician, and then I print out a report. Mm -hmm. You know, generally it would be hearsay if I present and not come to testify. But because it is like, um, I think the exception is like a business exception. You know, it's like a, a, a transaction like took a, place. Is 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 a is a document that's regularly made. You mm -hmm. know. Um, and it's generally, there's no question of like the validity of it. And yeah. so that's why there's an exception is, um, okay. and so that, that can come into evidence, you know, out the lab technician having to come in to verify the authenticity of the document. Hmm. That's just a little bit like, you know, higher level, like, you know, um, what the rule looks like, you know, um, but Generally, people get the idea, like, you know, you don't want something secondhand, you know, to be presented because we there's no way to authenticate it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, Platy told you and then you told me that Platy killed someone. It's like that. That's not going to fly. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be able to. I think like the the court's thinking is like, well, we can't bring platypus in, you know, based mm -hmm. on what was said to you yeah, and then said to me, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I didn't know a couple of those actual definitions, so that's good to know, but I, I feel like you guys are learning. <laughs> it is. Uh, I mean, I enjoy it. It's, I've always been a bit interested in law, but, uh, platypus, I, I think I have a word or two for Ari to guess and you to guess. I quickly pulled All up right. a, a list of rare legal terms. Uh, what do you think desuetude means? I'll go with platitude. Yeah, I'll go with platypus. I'm not good at reading Desitude. French. <laughs> destitute. Yeah, <laughs> destitute. Uh, being destitute, analogous to like being poor or living in squalor, I think. I think it's also um, another D-E-S-U-E-T-U-D-E. -E -E. Oh, no. Yeah, desuetude. Des never mind. D-E-S-U-E-T-U-D-E. -E desuetude. I don't know that word. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let me open up Google. Uh... Is it just being poor in French? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's poor, but with flavor. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's what they sprinkle on the frog legs. Um, can you can you spell that again? D e s u e t u d e. What do you think it is, Ari? This this the swid. Desuetude. Desuetude. Desu. Desuetude. Um, I have no idea what that means. Desuetude. Yeah. All right, take a, um, I don't have a sentence for it. <laughs> um, one second. Um, <laughs> I thought you were gonna the, have it already. The okay, <laughs> no, uh, the docks fell into desuetude. And an order, and another sentence is these principles are not new, they fall into desuetude. Oh, so they're not like uh, what is the word? Um, they're obsolete. That's a lot closer. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. Um, it's no longer in common practice. Correct. So, from what I see here, it's a doctrine in which a law becomes effectively void if it's not enforced for a very long time. Like obsolete. Yeah, I knew this. Yeah. I knew this word. So if they've been openly violated for years, conspicuously not enforced, and only prohibited immoral conduct, so yeah, yeah, I knew this word. Like yeah. I, I didn't just like, probably because of my pronunciation. Probably because of my pronunciation. Yeah, I definitely didn't Google this. No, yeah, uh, platypus. You've heard that word before, right? No, I thought he was using a different word earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another one, this will be my last one for you, uh, Ari and Platypus. All right. What do you think Trover means? You probably know what it is. Trover? Trover. 
Trover? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's, Could be a one, machine it's, part. it's one of three parts, all for like a similar action. Um. So. De- I've never ten, heard of that word Detin, before. Detinu, Replevin, and Trover. So Trover, so all three words relate to the wrongfully taken personal property. Trover uh, Trover is an action to recover the value of the property. Replevin is the action to recover the property itself. I've heard of Replevin. And det- I've never heard of Trover. Detinu, Detinu is an action by a person claiming a superior possessory <laughs> interest to recover both the property and damage I'm... for its loss. So, so both a Replevin and Trover. Oh, I love these French words. Yeah, it's. I'm, I was expecting Latin. It's so funny. <laughs> I, I see like detenu de se trouve. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. there's a lot of French words here. Honestly, when I think of law, I think of Latin. Um, there's a lot more Latin than French. But definitely. And then here the we English are just only were, picking the French ones. The English at one point were, they were like, oh, we want to be fancy and add French yeah. to our legal system. Platypus, you took French, right? No. No, sir. Oh, okay. I, I watch Ratatouille. I might need to learn <laughs> French a little bit in the future. And Mandarin. And German. And I'll just learn them I all. I took French. I'll just learn everything. Yeah, just one of each. One <laughs> just, yeah. just enough for the legal, just to get through legally in any country. Not how to ask for directions. <laughs> just the legal terms. You're ready to You're better do off damage flattened. overseas. You're under arrest for um, jaywalking in, you know, Hindi. Do you guys know? <laughs> do you guys know the full Miranda rights thing? I know most of it at least. Can you recite the Miranda oath? Like he you doesn't have, have his right little note card. Silent. Anything you uh-huh. can, or anything you say can and will be used against you. You uh-huh. have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, then one will be appointed to you. That's all I remember. It's more than me. That's yeah. That that's yeah. I that's only know about like the, what I remember. I only know like the I first think. Time. Um. Let me see. I I remember it being a little bit longer. It's like yeah. There's something else at the end of that too. Yeah, I don't remember though. And then I'm the one in law school. Miranda writes. Yeah, but you're not the one walking around with a little business card with it written on it all the time. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That's not right. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning, if you wish. Mm-hmm. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. Okay. That's the last part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's okay. That's that's pretty solid platypus. I used to watch a lot of Law and Order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they actually go through the whole Miranda rights on those shows, or if they just cut off halfway. Yeah, they don't have to usually just you everything. Though. Yeah, they just they start speaking and they just transition, so people only know you have the right to remain silent. Ding ding. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys had fun today. Yeah, it was an um, interesting You know, challenge. learning new, yes, learning sir. legal terms and, you know, stepping into the role of a law student, you know, yeah. that's something that not what a lot is, of people what get is to experience. Tort, what does tort mean again? One last time, just a small inconvenience or mis... Oh my gosh. Um, It's just a wrong that you do against Just a wrong. Person. Just a different word for a wrong, like an action a someone wrong. took. A wrong action a, somebody a wrong. took. Okay. A wrong action, yeah. And it and right, a tort well, is not like a legal term that you get charged on. There's just these are what you're accused of. You're accused of different types of torts. Or is that not right? Exactly. Okay. It's a it's a category. It's like you know, like um, how would I say? I don't know. Like clouds, like and then there's specific clouds, like for each like weather thing. I don't know. I'm just coming <laughs> up with like, like the most random analogy. <laughs> I I have so we got no a cumulonimbus like... coming over here. 
Yeah. Bunch of, ne- bunch of negligence just pouring down. <laughs> just a bunch. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks, guys, for joining. Oh, thank um, you. This was yeah. a wonderful, great episode. Excellent. Of Unfiltered Podcast. Unfiltered Pineapple Podcast. Unfiltered Pineapple Podcast, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think Dean and I are ready to defend love- ourselves. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, can, I don't need a lawyer. Can law now. I can defend can myself. Law. I can defend myself. Yeah. Per Judge, se. I'm fine. What is the legal term to say? I don't need a defense lawyer. I'll defend myself. You're a pro se litigant. Per se litigant. Lit litigant. Litigant. Per se litigant. Per se litigant. All right, I'm gonna learn yeah. that and tattoo it on my forearm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for joining for this wonderful episode, guys. Follow us on social medias. This was Ari, joined by Dean mm-hmm. and Platypus. So, See you guys. Bye. See you later. See you.